Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to an updated video on what's in my camera bag for wedding photography for 2022. I did a video just like this last year at the beginning of 2021 and it did really well. People were really interested in it. One of the questions that I get the most in my DMs on Instagram is just asking what gear I use, what my favorite gear is for weddings, what I use certain lenses for at weddings, all that good stuff. So having a video like this is just a nice way to be able to compile all that information into one place and be able to send it out to people when they ask. So yeah, let's get into it. I'm going to share everything that I bring with me to weddings, including like my backpack, what I carry everything in, my camera straps, all that stuff. So first I'm going to roll some clips of me showing you the like rolling hard case that I use and then I'll show you my backpack too. This is the case that I use to carry all my gear. It's a Nanuk 935 case. I love that it has a place for a lock so that if I have to leave this alone at a venue, I don't have to worry about people opening it and getting into my gear. It has wheels and then this handle pops out so you can roll it around easily. I'm gonna open it up and show you what's inside. This is what all the gear looks like inside. It fits pretty much everything that I need it to but I also bring a backpack for anything that I can't fit in here. I have my rolling case right here next to me so I can just pull everything out and show you. But one thing that I like the most about that is that it's actually carry-on size for airlines. So I can bring it with me on planes and about like 40% of my weddings this year are out of state. Um, so I can bring it with me to travel, which is really nice. I don't always bring that with me for out of state weddings because it is really bulky and I don't always need that much gear for the weddings I'm shooting. Um, but if I need to, it's a nice option. This is the camera backpack that I use. It's called the Brevity Jumper and I really, really like it. I've probably had this for like, I don't know, at least nine months now I would say. And it's held up really well. It's definitely gotten kind of dirty, but that's just because I use it all the time, multiple times a week. And I bring it to the middle of like fields and barns and all that stuff. So it's held up pretty well for all that activity. So you can see this large compartment is where you put all of your gear. And then there's a top compartment for like other items that looks like this. There's also this little front zip compartment. There's space for your water bottle. I love this little thing on the back. I don't know what it's called, but it's so you can um, put this on your suitcases and like thread this through the handle. And then there's also a laptop slot in the back. So I always bring this with me to shoots and then I bring it with me on wedding days. If I'm bringing my hard case, it just usually carries like my film camera and then some extra stuff up here. But if I'm traveling for a wedding and I don't wanna bring that rolling hard case, I can usually fit two camera bodies and like three lenses in here plus my flashes and I'm good to go. This is the camera harness that I use. It's from Amazon from the brand Coiro. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's what it looks like. It's pretty comfortable. I have really no complaints. I've had it for like two years and it's held up pretty well. Okay, onto the gear. Starting off with camera bodies, I use two Canon R6 bodies. One of them I'm using to film the video with right now, but it looks like this. They're from their mirrorless line and I really love them. They have dual SD card slots, which is super important to have a backup, especially on wedding days when those moments just can never be replicated. And I also love that it has the flip out screen right here. And then if we're shooting videography or if I just have my husband with me as a second shooter, he will use our Canon R. Also has a flip out screen that's actually like a little bit bigger. And this camera only has one SD card slot, so that's why it's not one of my main bodies. It's just like a secondary one. I'm not going to talk too much about the bodies because I did have my R6 last year and I kind of gave like a little bit of a brief review on it. Um, but I love them. They're great. Since that last video, I just picked up a second R6 because I liked it so much. Okay, so for lenses, I'm going to start with my most used lens, which is this Canon RF 50mm 1.2. It comes with this lens hood and it looks like this. As you'll probably remember, it's much bigger than the EF version of this lens. Get a little comparison. My EF Canon 50mm 1.2 actually lives on my film camera now, but as you can see, this is like a pretty big difference in size. It's actually a lot heavier, but it's amazing quality, 100% worth the money. The 50 millimeter focal length has been my most used lens since last year. So I knew that if I was gonna upgrade one lens, I definitely wanted it to be this one. I use this lens for pretty much all of my lifestyle sessions, especially if they're outdoors, engagements, couples, graduates, sometimes families whenever I shoot with families. And then on wedding days, I use this for the couple's portraits. I use it for wedding party photos. Sometimes I use it for family portraits, depending on their shot list. This is one of my best quality lenses in my collection and I just love the compression and the bokeh so I try to use it as much as I can whenever it makes sense. Next is this 35mm 1.4 lens. This is an EF lens that you probably will recognize from last time and it has an adapter on it because now all of my cameras are mirrorless so all of them require this adapter. It is the one with the control ring because I use my control ring for Kelvin, so I just thought it would be easier to have it. And also I'm honestly pretty sure that when I was buying my adapters they only had let me get myself back in focus. They only had um, the control ring ones available for purchase anyway, because the other ones were sold out. So that's just what I have. Also side note, I keep a UV filter on all my lenses just to protect them. So if you see like 
smudges and stuff on it. It's not on the actual lens. It's just on the filter. This is my 24 to 70 RF lens. I did kind of have the debate between if I wanted the like 28 to 70, I think 2.0 lens um, or this one, but Honestly, the 28 to 70 was just like so heavy. I don't think I would have been able to carry it around on a wedding day. It was just really heavy. And I don't mind that it only stops down at 2.8. It really doesn't bother me, especially because I had a 24 to 70 before that was 2.8, the EF version, so I'm used to it. If I'm in a really tight space and I want a lens that opens up more, I'll just use my 35. This is what it looks like. I use it a lot during getting ready and then sometimes family portraits. And then I also sometimes will use it during the reception because it's nice to have that zoom when people are giving speeches. That way I don't have to like walk super close to them. I love this lens. It's really sharp, really versatile. That's one of the main reasons I got it is just because I knew it would be sharper than the EF version that I had and it works great. I also sometimes will use this for ceremonies paired with my 70 to 200 so that way I have everywhere from 24 millimeters up to 200 millimeters covered. Next up is this 70 to 200 lens, which I was really on the fence about buying, but I 100% I'm so happy that I got it. When I was kind of deciding if I wanted to make this purchase or not, I was thinking I'll probably really only use it during ceremonies. Do I really want to spend that much money on something if I'm going to only use it for like maybe an hour of the wedding day? But the build quality of this lens, the way that it renders images, it's just like beautiful. I use this lens at every single ceremony to get really gorgeous close-up portraits of the couple, saying their vows, exchanging rings. It just has the most beautiful compression, gorgeous bokeh. It's really well made and I can just tell that it's like a really good quality lens. So yeah, I am super, super happy that I got this lens. I also use this a lot for proposals when I want to be really far away, but get those really nice close-up shots. I've used it a ton for that. I'm more use out of this lens than I expected to and I'm really glad that I've made this purchase. Let's talk about flashes. So throughout all of 2021, my go-to flashes were the Godox V8 62s for Canon. I have two of these and they look like this. Get it to focus and oh it's on i don't know why i have two of these and this is what it looks like in the front and then this is the back which i'll turn on so you can see i really enjoyed using these as my flashes haven't really had any issues if you shoot on full flash power rapidly your flash will definitely overheat so it definitely like has some overheating problems but if you know how to use your flash if you can shoot at a lower flash power and like up your iso and you just don't go crazy you shouldn't really have issues with that my favorite part is honestly just that they have batteries um, that are rechargeable instead of like using double a batteries oops um, so that's the main reason that I like these flashes, but yeah, these are my two Godox flashes I have this little diffuser thing that I put on top which looks small and like it wouldn't really do much But I think it does really well outside and just like diffusing and spreading out the light a little bit and making it like a little bit softer I just recently picked up a new flash which I haven't even used yet because I haven't shot a wedding since I got it But it is the Canon 600 EX2 RT speed light. This is what it looks like it's like a little bit bigger than my Godox flash. This is the Godox, this is the Canon. The backs look super similar. The menu is pretty much the same. I got this flash because I know that you can fire a little bit more rapidly on it and it doesn't really have overheating issues, which is really important. A downside is that it does take AA batteries and I know it goes through them pretty quickly. So on Amazon, I got a bunch of rechargeable AA batteries. I have a bunch of them, but this is just like one little pack. With the Canon flash, I like that there's less tension and it's like much easier to move it around. Um, I just don't like they have to press the button, but. It's something that I'm sure I'll get used to. This is the current video light that I use. I think that I showed a different one in my past video, which I have tried like three or four different video lights at this point until I found one that I really liked. The main part of the wedding day that I have a video light for is for the sparkler exit, but it's also just like a nice backup in case something ever happened to my flash. I would still have some type of artificial light. First one that I have from Amazon is really good, but it just wasn't bright enough. A lot of times that sparkler exits, the couple is over here and I'm like all the way back here and I'm trying to make sure that my video light is casting a light this far back. And the lights that I had before just weren't doing that for me. They just weren't like strong enough. I previously had that Amazon light and then I also tried out a loom cube, which Definitely was not strong enough at all, but now I have this light from Aperture. This is what it looks like when it's on. You can control the warmth of the light so it can be pretty warm or you can cool it down like that. And then also has like a booster setting, which makes it super, super bright, which I use for sparkler exits. That looks like this. By far, this is definitely like the best quality video light that I have. Maybe if I put it on me, that would make it better. Okay, so this is the regular light. And then this is it when it's boosted. So you can see there's like a pretty big difference. So again, the brand is Aperture and hands down this is the best video light that i've had so far i think that that's it for my main gear i also have an 85 millimeter 1.8 lens that i use every now and then but not a ton and then i have an rf 35 millimeter 1.8 lens that i'm filming with right now and we mainly use that for videography I always have an sd card case with me this is from amazon it's waterproof and shockproof 
and it holds all my SD cards right here. I always keep my flash battery charger with me and then my camera battery charger. And then I like to have hand sanitizer with me, some tissues, and then I have my EpiPen. I actually keep my camera batteries in this cute little case that my EF to RF adapter, this little thing came in. So they fit perfectly in here. And it's from Canon, so it's like kind of nice and protective. And yeah, other than that, I like to keep my business cards with me. I always bring water, I bring snacks. Also just got this cute little Instax printer so that I can print out some photos at the end of the night for my couples after their wedding is over. Hello, this is editing me who forgot to include some stuff. I meant to say that I also carry around this little fanny pack that I got from Target. I keep memory cards in here and an extra battery super helpful and then if we're shooting video we use the Tascam dr 10 l microphones these are lav mics it looks like this it's just a little tiny microphone that gets clipped onto the suit or the dress and then this goes in their pocket and the gimbal that we use is the dji ronin sc okay back to the footage but that is it for what i'm bringing with me to weddings in 2022 if you have any questions please feel free to leave a comment and like this video if you found it helpful if you want to keep up with my work and my everyday life you can follow me on instagram at grace torres photo i thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time